worth in the prize cards. And then that Mew to go along the prize cards as well. That is one way for Azul and this Charizard deck to really help the early game find those items that you need. That Battle VIP Pass, the rare candies. And speaking of Battle VIP Pass, Ooh. Caden's going to start things off in our winning in round nine, starting with that Ralts and that powerful item card. Yep. Get to get that opening search, check things out. <laughs> Yeah, you can see uh, a little bit of technology there. The Deoxys line is in this list. Uh, it's, uh, that's something that we weren't always expecting. We did see, uh, see that uh, shown at San Antonio, finally got its limitless page. Yep. So uh, maybe maybe some additional players uh, saying, hey, you know what, that's pretty good. And with this battle VIP pass, it's going to be Mew as the first option. most likely a Ralts here, especially with that Radiant Greninja and the prize cards. And another Ooh. one. A couple more friends are going to join the bench here. Yeah, obviously, fantastic start to see both of those. Get plenty of Pokemon down. Zul knows he's got his work cut out for him. <laughs> this is going to be a long one. And Hayden's thinking about getting that Deoxys down pretty early now. And just taking a look through the deck, checking those prize cards. Looks at least the Ralts is going to be the choice. Maybe not that Deoxys, so decides against it. Surprise. Now, without Radiant Greninja, you have lost a lot of your early game draw power with that concealed cards. Going to depend on what's in the hand for... Next few turns, some level balls maybe, Corellia's for refinement, but there's energy yeah. going to be able to retreat for that Mew and Mysterious Tail. Yeah, that was the big piece here to continue to find some item cards. Mysterious Tail is going to be helpful in doing just that. Maybe this will lead to some future Pokemon. That level ball would be a nice one to find, lead into that Corellia on the following turn. And that's just the name of the game. You're just looking for consistency at this point. And load up those refinements, start drawing, and... Sure, you're not going to be taking those early knockouts against Azul, but it leads into situations where you will have uh, some someone to attack against those uh, the giant hit points on the Charizard. Yeah, and uh, with Deoxys V-Star, okay. it is actually a way to take a big knockout, maybe, on something like a Charizard EX, but you are giving up a two-prizer in the active spot compared to something like that Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Yeah, I've seen players lean away from the four oh, seal oh stone no. strategy and okay, oh that's this? that's a turn all right that's definitely a turn azul just oh. draws attaches that fire energy and does a heat tackle and now kaden just needs to do 50 damage to take the knockout here but unless you actually have a very good hand with gardevoir you don't really see it too often it is tricky of course you think maybe chrysalia in situations like this curlia could uh potentially draw into that rare candy gardevoir uh, EX, and then you can lean into some other things, but uh, maybe the card that you'd have to use to get there would be Iono. 
You don't want to give Vazul a new hand. Not at all. We do have an energy attachment on the Deoxys V, it looks like. And there is that Iono and Azul breathing a sigh of relief, at least for now. It's a little curious. Of, of course, maybe if you can attack with the Deoxys, then you'll have an option. But uh, maybe the energy attachment to the Mew would lead into a retreat for Cresselia. Mm -hmm. You'd have more energies in the discard pile. And if you find Rare Candy Gardevoir, you're likely to find a way to win this game. But it looks like the pieces are not all there. Now, we do still have a refinement available, I believe. Fog Crystal is going to thin the deck out for an energy. So if Caden refinements into Rare Candy Deoxys V-Star, I think that does it. Okay. We like that. I mean, <laughs> depends who you're rooting for. <laughs> I want to see cool stuff happen. <laughs> I, I want to see a game, maybe. There's, there's, there's potential for two more of those. Calm down. All right. Well, there's a potential for another turn, at least, for Azul <laughs> here. As we'll see. Nothing much in that hand as of yet. Mysterious Tail could be the bailout. If it finds a rare candy, that maybe leads to something. There's no rare candy. There's nothing. Just another battle VIP pass you can't use. That is refinement fodder. <laughs> There's already one in hand. Yeah, this is kind of an awkward series of draws for Caden here. Does play three rare candy, which is a little on the higher end for a lot of these Gardevoir decks. making sure Caden's not going back in. Kind of signals that this turn's going to be pretty much over. That is great news for Azul. It means he's going to be sticking around. He does have a brand new hand and found a rare candy. Does he have anything to do with it? I don't, I don't uh, think so. <laughs> no. Does have another Charmander. You can go ahead and play that down so you not lose. I think there's an Arvin. Yeah, it does look like there's an Arvin in hand. So Azul at least has a supporter for this turn. It's definitely very uh, scary turn one. Yeah, there's, I mean, obviously not finding the basic Pokemon can lead to disaster for this deck. You need to have access to the evolutions in these earlier stages of the game. Turn two, turn three, find that Pidgeot, lean into the Charizard and start to get a little more aggressive. But in these turns now, you're going to start seeing supporters for ways to set up Pokemon. And instead of having the bosses to target down Pokemon like that Refinement Curlia, you're just playing a lot slower, trying to find any setup in order to make this game last a few more turns. Azul eyeing down Charmander, potentially Manaphy, but no, it's, it's going to be that Charmander with the level ball here. Get another one down on the bench as often as you can. Arvin here. We'll be able to search the deck for an item and a tool. Looks like Ultra Ball is going to be the choice here. You can grab that for a Seal Stone, maybe. No, just the Ultra Ball. Azul is playing the one of Switch in this Charizard list now. Trying to surprise a few people. It can be helpful. Especially but in something like a Snorlax matchup. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 <laughs> have seen, too much, we have seen that that is not a matchup that you want to face, but <laughs> uh, certainly can be one of those nice ways to assist yourself, especially when you're only playing six fire energies. Yeah. Uh, it can be difficult to retreat. And just like that, Azul went from energy pass to rare candy Charizard EX, take a knockout on the Mew. Caden's going to have to put together a pretty solid turn to try to take a knockout. Might start things off with a refinement here. Has two psychic energies in the discard already. All right. Yeah, we see Battle VIP Pass is going to lead into an Ultra Ball for an additional refinement, but we're running into that problem once more. If these Pokemon were not evolved on the turn, the second turn of the game, and now you don't have those evolutions available. Certainly you could use the other Gardevoir, Shining Arcana, continue to draw and build up this hand, but ultimately missing those rare candies it's, uh, leads to a, a lot slower of a setup. All right. I think i got to do some math here, Kyle. So 
The V-Star power Star Force from Deoxys V-Star is one psychic for 60 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. Okay. So there's three, three already. That's 180, so three more. Yes. All right, we're good. I, I, did, I mean, you're over here doing finger math for that, and I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a basic multiplication table. No, and I, <laughs> I only do calculus. Okay. Go ahead, flex. All right. Caden is one energy short, though. Needs an energy off this Iono just to take the knockout. Yep. It's not just the energy, but there is the energy. In, ooh. There's, there's a lot going on there. Ultra Ball as well, but how do you incorporate that? I guess you can't always throw away the Psychic Energy, deal some additional damage to the Deoxys. But yes, thinking against that. and I understand. It's, it's tough when you only have six cards in hand, and you're trying to work out not only the refinement, but then the discard for the refinement, too. It feels like you're losing a lot of value. I mean, you can always Ultra Ball for the Gardevoir. Rare Candy, the Gardevoir, just Shining Arcana. You don't have to discard stuff then. But, but I want to evolve these ones. <laughs> <laughs> if they're even available, Caden does find that Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Has the Rare Candy in hand. Has an energy attachment for turn in that Reversal energy as well, although he's going to be going ahead. But if Azul has something like a uh, Rare Candy Charizard, Boss's Orders, take the knockout on Gardevoir EX, then you can actually respond. Well, we will see the Shining Arcana play down. And the hand's not great, but, but a knockout is a knockout. We, we certainly take those. This is going to be Deoxys helping out a lot here with a big KO on the Charizard. Not much left for Azul. That's in the hand because it's just Charmanders right now. Boss's orders off the top, but does have Luminion V. So you can go ahead and use Luminous Sign to search for a supporter, most likely Arvin. Does Arvin even get you there? No? Maybe just Professor's Research? I don't know. I think there is a Charizard in hand, so you're just looking for the rare okay. candy at this oh, point. Oh, you have four Seal Stones too now. And now we just see the, the issue of Azul does not have any Pidgey. Nothing to fall back on, anything to continue after this Charizard is potentially knocked out. Of course, it's going to be very difficult to knock out this Pokemon. 330 hit points, already used the Deoxys. But, I mean, we've seen crazier things. Now, we do see the Reversal Energy in Caden's hand. Would you have attached that last turn? Because we know there wasn't an energy attachment for turn. That's a good point. Yeah, you could, you could either play that down or you could just discard it, potentially, with like a refinement previously. It's, it's not a card that really helped out in this situation. No, it helps out right now. Like, Azul's yeah. going to take oh, the knockout. Oh, we're at five. Out. You're yeah. right. Yeah, that would be, that'd be very big, especially if this was a list that plays two, and it does. So having the double reversal, that, that certainly could lead to big knockouts against that Charizard. Especially that Charmander sitting on the bench with two energy, ready to Ember for 40 damage. But yes. there is the return knockout from Azul going down to three prize cards here. And what looked like a very dire turn one has turned into... Somewhat favorable for Azul here. Still just playing right off the top. Two cards found off the Shining Arcana, Artisan, and a Fog Crystal. There's one thing that Kane's really missing, though, and that's just the number of Curlia on the bench to refinement all these Psychic Energies to the discard. All right, we know there's four Psychic in the discard at this point. You can discard one more with the... Uh, the refinement that you could have with this Curlia, but uh, afterwards you're looking for, I mean, it, it's, it's difficult to find them in the discard pile at this point. You're, you'd need the Ultra Ball to assist. You'd have to use a supporter uh, towards that effect, and that's, that's a lot to ask for. Now, I can't remember if it was in the hand before Caden played the Iona or after, but there was a copy of Luxurious Cape. Uh, actually, sorry, Fancy. Uh, that is a way to kind of boost up some damage from that Scream Tail to be able to take a knockout on something like that Charizard EX or even that Luminion V on the bench. Caden thinning out a little bit more. Worker, Worker to discard the own our zone. Yeah, you know, at this point, if you can avoid Pidgey, you might as well. And Wow, look at this. Ultra Ball double discard of the Psychic Who needs Energies. refinement at all? Exactly what you're looking for at this point of the game. It's six Psychics in the discard now. 
And I think with the, the six and then the reversal. Yep. That's math. That you is did math. it. Yeah. You found the math. <laughs> that lines up very nicely. 330 on the nose. That would hurt. Yeah. That's why they tell you to punch the sharks there. Mm. I don't know if Charizard's a shark, per se, but... That's the best I got. Okay. There is a big Psychic Embrace and 120 damage on the Gardevoir in the active spot. It's not paralyzed. It's just used that Shining Arcana. <laughs> it's just tired. <laughs> it's round nine. <laughs> Let's just take a little nap. I don't blame it. And just like that, two turns, two big knockouts on clean Charizard EXs. Yeah, see... Caden playing down a lot of additional resources considering potential Iono. And there is three copies of that card in Azul's list. Does not want to have these resources back in the deck. Understandable. You have the resources to close out here. You've already taken four prize cards. And there is the Luminion target that you could work on later on. Yeah, Azul probably wants to find Manaphy right about now. Does have the Art of Zone in hand, but that is a way to get around that scream tail that's just sitting there on the bench, waiting to scream at you. It's dangerous. Ah! <laughs> is, is, that, is that what it sounds like? Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> but it gets increasingly louder for each damage that gets put on it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll wait to see. If, uh, if the damage is uh, placed there, I will, I will let you <laughs> take the finishing knockout. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours, Jeremy. Thanks. Now Azul did find another Charmander with Artizone, really just playing out as much as possible, trying to navigate this turn. Does have Iono. Vitality Band is the choice right now. You don't need it to take the knockout, but you don't really need it at all. Yeah, <laughs> you, don't, you don't care to see this later on. Okay. Plenty of prize cards have been taken. Azul might not care about the placement of that at this point. Charmander can get the job done against this Gardevoir, but we need a little more help. Maybe the hand disruption could be beneficial, but I mean, there's there was no Manaphy. No Manaphy. Now, Caden does need the Luxurious Cape to be able to take the knockout on Luminion V. A lot of Gardevoir lists have been dropping that tool card, so maybe Azul's just not expecting it right now, but if the Charmander goes down in the active spot, and you don't have a response, it's, you're still losing in the first place. Right. And wow, there's it's the cape in, in hand. It's in hand. <laughs> and Caden just has it. He's just going through the motion now. Take it away, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Luxurious cape on the scream tail. There's going to be a ton of energy. And ah, knockout <laughs> on Luminion V. And just like that, Caden Romero up game one against the San Antonio regional champion. Bravo. Bravo <laughs> to everyone. Everyone who's sticking around watching this final match that we have here of day number one. We hear you out in the crowd watching these two great players go at it. Caden taking game number one here in 17 minutes. Still plenty of time for two great potential games if Azul is trying to make the comeback here. And uh, I mean, that was, that was not pretty for Azul. No Pidgey was able to find the rare candy Charizard and start to attack at this early stage of the game. But this Deoxys is something different. Put in work with that Star Force, V-Star power, and takes the big one-hit KO. We saw another one-hit KO with that reversal energy. And here is that Scream Tail cleaning things up for Katie. That's all that she wrote at that point. And I mean, that Ultra Ball for the two Psychic oh. Energies. That was that was huge. Uh, it was very much needed, or yeah. else Caden was not taking that knockout there. It was, yeah. I, it, it didn't seem likely, and that is an issue that we see with Gardevoir players. When you aren't able to incorporate those earliest in the early stages, you just don't see the discards. We didn't see Cresselia. We didn't see any of the usual shenanigans uh, for a deck like this. I don't even, you're not even playing Cresselia in this list. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's something that we're going to have to look for in game, game two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely interesting to see how these Gardevoir lists have been uh, swapping in and out these tech Pokemon. We've seen Zacian V kind of 
fall down to the wayside for a little bit, then being brought back in, and then now you're seeing this Deoxys V-Star line put in a ton of work, especially here in this matchup. Just another way to take a big knockout, and it's a two-prize Pokemon, so if your opponent takes a knockout, your reversal energy is alive again. Ooh, Deoxys in the prize cards. Full Pidgeot line with the rare candy down as well. Azul's going to start things off for us. Hey, yeah. <laughs> there it is. That's much better. Got to flip those V-Star markers back face up. Azul's going to be able to start this turn one here with this battle VIP pass. Can go ahead and find a Rotom V. Maybe something like another Charmander. And eventually end the turn with an instant charge. Thankfully, finds that Pidgey this time around. And... The fact that we saw the, the Charmander moved over makes me think maybe there's a little more going on in this hand, but there's we'll not. see. Well, shucks. He just wanted <laughs> to see it. He's yeah. just happy it's here. Like, oh, thanks for not being prized. <laughs> this could have been so much worse. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, certainly a solid start. You don't need much in the opening. You find these Pokemon. There's not that imminent threat from Gardevoir like you would against, what, half the format taking opening <laughs> yeah. turn knockouts. Let's just draw cards. Instant charge ends your turn, but you get to draw three cards. Pretty good trade off when you don't even get an attack turn one. Caden going to start things off with a fog crystal. And honestly, this is such a powerful item for psychic Pokemon ever since it got released. Being able to search for a basic Pokemon or a psychic energy, very versatile in what you're trying to do here, especially in a deck like Gardevoir. Yeah, and so often you're looking for that additional psychic energy, or you're trying to thin down in points like this. You can discard that with the Curlia, whatever it may be. Uh, it is tricky also to just have the psychic energy in the opening hand, too. So uh, we've seen players have to search for that to then retreat to the Mew. Looks like this time it's going to be the other way around, but Caden doesn't care. As long as he's able to draw into the right card to use that Mysterious Tail, you're more likely to run into that Battle VIP pass. That's really the name of the game. Right now, four Pokemon is with a lot of these decks. Uh, can you get Battle VIP Pass turn one? And if you can't, at least get two Ralts down so that you can move into your Mirage step yep. and uh, just play the uh, the thin bench style. Which is a, a route to victory that we've seen a lot of times with this Gardevoir deck. Uh, going with the Mirage step route allows you to just get behind in prizes, trigger those counter catchers, those reversal energies. And we're going to see an Iona here first before Mysterious Tail. And that's going to shuffle away Azul's hand that just got stacked up with those extra cards. Yeah, uh, I like seeing this. Of course, you can get the six cards in hand, then add an additional card with the Mysterious Tail. Most likely, you're going to see an item card here, and it just gives you more resources to work with on the next turn. And here is that Mysterious Tail. Do we see a Battle VIP pass? Ooh, oh. the only item! That's, uh, that's an easy decision, then, I suppose. Now we can go ahead and find something like Radiant Greninja. You do have a Ralts prized. And you do have that information as well about the Deoxys line. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be something that you can set up in the early stages and go for that aggressive route one more time. This would be the slower approach. And maybe this does mean that you lean more into the Mirage Step style. Just play down two Ralts, have that Radiant Greninja. And, uh, oh, has a Ralts in hand, too. You know what? <laughs> you can do whatever you want at this point, Caden. Those are all great cards. <laughs> does find that Radiant Greninja to go along with the Ralts. And does have a Reversal Energy in hand, but I'm not sure if you really want to conceal the cards that away. Doesn't seem worth it at this point. You already retreated, so no attachment going on here. This is probably just to, to have the Radiant Greninja down for the following turn. You will likely see those refinements and start to draw into some more resources here. Now here's the real thing. Do you bench the Ralts or just pass? You're kind of just playing into the Mirage Step route here by yeah. not benching the Ralts. Yeah, I like this. You just play the slower game. You have plenty of time. You only see the one Charmander here, so it looks like Azul does have a little more work before he can commit to start taking knockouts. Going to start things off with a level ball. Can find another Charmander, most likely. But the real interesting thing is what's in the hand. There's an Artizone, a Collapse Stadium, there's an Ultra Ball, Energy, and I think Counter Catcher? Yeah, this is not the best hand to work with. Obviously, you did see the Ultra Ball, which means that you can go for the uh, Luminion and then find the Arvin, maybe. 
find a, a way to get at this Pidgeot or Charizard, whatever you're you're going for in this early stage. But it's it's an ugly bench. Yeah, it's gonna have to be by way of four Seal Stone. So Luminion V fetches the Arvin. Arvin will be able to grab Rare Candy and four Seal Stone. Four Seal Stone will be able to go ahead and grab that Charizard EX. I guess you can go Pidgeot, but uh, I, I like attacking this turn. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, obviously there's some risk that comes along with it if you don't have the additional Charmander. So I, I love seeing the Artisan here. That means you will be able to place down an additional Pokemon. If something crazy happens, you do see the knockout with reversal shenanigans and all the psychics, you know, then you're going to be safe. But yeah, this is, this is definitely the way to go here. There is the Rare Candy Charizard EX. Infernal Rain searches the deck for three fire energies. Attach them to your Pokemon any way you like. I'm going to go ahead and put that extra energy on the Charmander on the bench. Again, Azul is only playing six fire energy in this Charizard list compared to the seven that he won San Antonio with. Let's have an extra Super Rod to go along with it, though. And there is a Burning Darkness taking the knockout. Now, Caden has the ability to Mirage Step if he wants, but it's going to have to use a Reversal Energy here. This yeah, it's, it's kind of awkward. Yeah, obviously it's it's not what you're looking for, but just the fact that you have access to this attack is something to be grateful for at this point. It means that you will have those additional Curlias. You can take a look with the Ultra Ball, just guarantee that they're all there. You have to also find the, uh, the Mirage Step to make this all work, but I think, uh, I think he's going to be pleasantly ready to go. Yeah. You know, all of them <laughs> lined up. An embarrassment of riches. Again, the only bad part about this is having to use that reversal energy because you know this Curlia is getting knocked out next turn. Yep. But there is that Mirage step. Search your deck for three Curlia. Put them on your bench. No Ralts needed. And it doesn't matter how bad your hand is at a point like this. You have access to six additional draws. Any Psychic Energy turns that into eight additional draws with the Radiant Greninja. Sure, Azul will have a lot of momentum on his side. Being able to take this knockout, take two to those two prize cards to really, uh, before we start to get into those interactions back and forth. But Caden's familiar with that. That's, that's something that's pretty casual in uh, a Gardevoir matchup. The one issue now being you're going to lose one of those Reversal Energies, which can be a big piece. Flap Stadium here is going to allow Zul to get rid of one of those. Pokemon V sitting on the bench, not really doing much anymore. Luminion V goes to the discard. Radiant Greninja goes for Caden. And there's that Burning Darkness taking the knockout. Azul going down to four prize cards here in game two. But Caden now can finally start doing something. Has access to three refinements. Has a rare candy in hand. And a psychic energy to draw. This is where things start to get moving. You have that psychic energy. If you can continue to chain those together, it would be ideal. This is this well, we, is we, not it. I've got a couple pairs, you know. This is not poker. <laughs> <laughs> We're in trouble. A lot of good resources likely to fall. Would have loved to see maybe that Shining Arcana Gardevoir in an instance like this. Rare Candy, draw additional resources, maybe find some more. But this hand's just not going anywhere. Maybe Iono, something like that would help out. Mm -hmm. How about a Screamtail Lost Vacuum? No. Jeremy, you're not listening. I, <laughs> I want energies. I want Pokemon. Not those ones. <laughs> Screamtail hits the discard with another five. And how about that's, all of your rare candies? That's so bad. The ordering of this is wildly unfortunate because, yes, you can bring back some resources with this Super Rod, but you're going to Iono all the rare candies to the bottom, and then you draw and you can't rare candy this active Pokemon. It means once more, another turn where you're just not getting anything done. Super Rod here is going to shuffle back that Deoxys V-Star, Screamtail, and a Ralts. And we're going to see an Iono here, and Caden is desperately trying to find something to do. I mean, he's doing something. It's just not very good. <laughs> yeah. But this do is what, better. what you have to do at this point. You, you have that Iono. You understand you're going to lose these resources. You can deal 10 whole damage if you want. That's not a lot. That's a 33rd of the way there. <laughs> that is math. Azul does only get four cards, but it looks like there's an Arvin sitting in that hand. 
And while Caden draws into the Scream Tail that was shuffled back in with Super Rod. Finds all of the level ball, which would search out his Curlias that he already has. I believe he did shuffle back in the Mirage Step, so could have access to that evolution. I, I, I may be misremembering that. Yeah, uh, did not shuffle back the Mirage Step. Well, boo. But did find the Ralts that was shuffled back in. Club Stadium still out, so this Pokemon can't be played down on the bench just yet. Would be nice to have the reload of this Ralts when you're likely going to lose one next turn. Again, just multiple level ball. Don't really do much when all of your Curlia are in play. Energy on the bench Curlia. And you can evolve into the Gardevoir EX, but that's just not doing anything here. Just a pass of the turn. Azul's going to be able to go up three prizes to six after an attack. And now Azul's just trying to get a Pidgeot EX set up. Oh, yeah. And the This energy placement is kind of dangerous. You understand that Azul already wants to knock out a Curlia. <laughs> Don't give him any more reason by throwing an energy there. <laughs> he's he's going to take it away. Yeah, I'd much rather prefer the Teleportation Burst, Steel 10. Okay. Bring up the Ralts without an energy. But with that, boss's orders. Azul is going to apply a lot of pressure on Caden to try to figure out something to do better. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's just not much that you need to accomplish at this point. If you had access to the Pidgeot, of course, you would prioritize that so that you have some late game resources available, can continue to chain together these Charizards. But you have the Charmeleon, you have the energies lined up for this Charizard. You just continue to take knockouts and apply that pressure. Every single prize card gets you one step closer to closing the door against Caden. I mean, this really is the pivotal turn here for Caden. You need to at least take a knockout, maybe on a Pokemon like that Rotom if you can. But we're, we're running out of time with these prize cards exchanging. A double level ball play to find a Manaphy. Again, just thinning the deck out as much as possible before these refinements start trying to draw into the cards you need. And Manaphy is most likely getting discarded here. There we go. Iono is a pretty big find here, along with that Super Rod, but I do believe that's the last one. Yeah, we'd, we'd have to see the commitment of some of these Pokemon to evolve. So you'd likely use Refinement first and then play down this Gardevoir, or you feel comfortable evolving the active Pokemon, which doesn't feel great, but at least you can get this Pokemon locked into play before you use the Iono. Oh, it's so rough having to attach the Reversal Energy to that Curlia instead of something like a Ralts and hoping for a Rare Candy Gardevoir. But again, that's just more cards you're trying to hit off this Iono. You know, you shuffle those to the bottom of the deck, and there was a bunch of level balls being played. You know. Yeah, but <laughs> may maybe they just wanted to go back home. This hand is not it. Does find a rare candy? Has that shining arcana Gardevoir? <laughs> just just in time to not evolve the, yeah. the, the, that the right one, but that's how it goes sometimes. Do you rare candy hope to draw into another Gardevoir? <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, we do have access to a Shining Arcana here. Ooh. Ultra Ball. Whoa. <laughs> that was pretty good. Ultra Ball. That's going to lead to a lot more Psychic Energies in the discard pile. Ooh, and there is two in hand. Okay. This is what Caden has been trying to do this entire game, too. It's something he did game one. And that's taken this big knockout on Charizard EX. And with this Ultra Ball, can also grab the second Gardevoir, Rare Candy to it, get yeah. a couple more cards in hand. And I do believe there's six Psychic in the discard now. Yeah, that's exactly what he needed. And that's, it's, it's crazy that once more we're in that situation where the Ultra Ball double Psychic Energy is found with a zero Curlia in play, no other way to discard, <laughs> finds it off the top two there. It's ridiculous. And we love it. Psychic Embrace, two energy on the active guard of EX so you can retreat it. And now we get to charge up the Shining Arcana guard of War for a big brainwave for knockout. Now Azul does have an energy on that Charmeleon lined up, so just an energy in hand can take a knockout. And there we see that second Shining Arcana getting rare candied. 
Yeah, might as well at this point can continue to find some additional cards. Maybe you find another energy Super and you can Rodney. play it down. Yeah, it's not too bad. And there still needs to be some damage on that Gardevoir in the active spot. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Okay, I think they were just clarifying all the energy attachments. Uh, again, yeah. there still needs to be damage on the active Gardevoir. There we go. Yep, energy placement there. That last psychic energy was not the attachment for the turn. That was the Shining Arcana effect, finding that psychic energy, placing it down. Then the knockout from Brainwave happens. Charizard falls. And somehow, the prize cards exchanging. It's getting a little bit closer. Azul still with three remaining to close out this game, but... Look what you, look at what you have to do in this situation to continue to fight. Has to play down the Luminion once more to find that Arvin. This this is the danger when you don't have that pitch out. Of course you have to. You need to put that pressure on early. You have to find that Charizard. But so unfortunate that you just haven't been able to find the right pieces when you get Iona. Yeah. And ooh. Whoa. Big card here. That technical machine devolution could come in handy maybe to. Clean up some of those Pokemon that are heavily damaged. But again, another one that's uh, pretty good at cleaning up heavily damaged Pokemon. That Charmander in the active. <laughs> yeah, raw. <laughs> uh, and it actually uses the devolution here. That rare candy is going to come back to bite Caden. Now, the Gardevoir does go into the hand. All right, damage still needs to go back onto that Curlia. Yep, 40 damage. Okay, I'll go first. There right. we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be game two there. Caden says, you know what? I needed all those. <laughs> I don't think I can win this game. And Azul is going to take game number two here. We got we got enough time for a game three. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> we finally do, Kyle. Woohoo! <laughs> this is history in the making. 14 Again. minutes. Let's go. Okay. Well, who knows if it's enough time? Calm down. <laughs> all right? <laughs> Let me have one minute of happiness. Well, here's that game two. Azul starts off early yet again with a turn two knockout. This time on the Mew with the Collab Stadium, getting rid of Luminion, getting rid of Radiant Greninja. Mirage step from Caden, able to keep him alive for a little bit, but again, just not finding the right combination of cards. Azul able to just take knockout after knockout. And then here's that technical machine devolution to clean things up for game two and force the game three. 14 minutes to go. Azul and Keith both need a win. I Be agree. to see if uh, they have some sort of agreement going on or we're just playing it out. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to come to that. Obviously, we still have 13 minutes of gameplay and then yet that plus three turns to work with. This is a matchup where you expect to see the six prize cards taken, especially in uh, the three turns that we have available. There are going to be EXs in play. That's just kind of the nature of how these decks play out. So uh, I, I expect to see a fun one here. Hopefully, oh, they have the hands to work with it, too. I can put them out. Okay. A little interesting start for his little here. It does have Rotom B, Luminion B, and a Charmander. Okay. Yeah, this is really debating about what to start with. Not the... Not your favorite decision to make. Obviously, the pressure that you put on yourself when you play that Charmander into the active position, if you don't find an additional one, you can be in a world of pain. The Rotom would be able to absorb maybe potential damage or just uh, make Caden second guess uh, going for an aggressive start. But oh, it's wow. going to be the case. And this is a Mirage Step game. That's two Ralts. That's what we're finding. That is indeed rough prizes to go into this game three, especially with Kate starting with double battle of the IP pass. <laughs> He's gonna, He's gonna go, oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a Ralts and a Radiant Greninja. I'm going to eye down another Ralts here. And the maybe only. The, Mew. <laughs> the only other Ralts. <laughs> and again, if you just go for your other kind of like tech Pokemon in the matchup, something like that, Deoxys V, uh, or even just the Mew. You're filling up your bench a little too much, especially starting that Jirachi in the active, which is not going to do anything in this match. It's okay. He prized one of the refinement curlias. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wasn't going to find anything good anyways. Oh, Kyle. All right. Three Pokemon found. 
probably I say, gonna hold I off. I say just go for four. It's a, you you need bench spaces to open up. You need Azul to just attack into this uh, this Jirachi. Let's just get some stuff. We got we got to see some cards. It's gonna be ugly. Yeah, we know this. We also have eleven minutes to close out against one of the best players in the world. Let's give ourselves opportunities to draw into the right things. Well, uh, yeah, I, I can definitely see that. Now I do believe there's an energy in Caden's hand. Can retreat for the Mew, get a Mysterious Tail off. There's no threat of a knockout on Azul's side of the board on turn one. But this is not how you kind of want to draw up a game three. Going to start things off with the concealed cards. Ooh. I believe this is the first concealed cards of the match. Yeah, it just hasn't worked out. It's it's been in play. Yeah, it just hasn't uh, found the the right resources. This works out here. Multiple psychic energy to the discard pile. Mew being played down. I like the sequence scene here. Play that fog crystal. Thin out a bit. Then you can draw up with mysterious tail. Let's get aggressive. I like getting aggressive. B E aggressive. What, are we cheerleaders now? Yeah, Wancho was. Oh. Why can't I cheerlead? That is true. Tail. All right, Mysterious Tail looking at the top six cards, trying to find an item card. Already has plenty of uses for Battle VIP Pass. I don't know if you really want to take that one. Yeah, you I gotta, guess Counter Catchers isn't really doing anything for you either. You've you got to be more specific. <laughs> are you looking for an <laughs> item card? <laughs> I guess you do take the Battle VIP Pass. You have Ultra Ball in hand. At least uh, some easy discards for next turn. There you go. Yep. It's just a resource you don't mind throwing away with the Curlia if uh, you do end up finding the evolutions and you want to play those down. And you could thin out and look for more stuff. But at this point, you know there's there's no good basic Pokemon left. I was just about to ask you, what do you like about benching the Deoxys V here? And I love it that Caden actually benched it. Just apply as much pressure as possible on Azul. And all right. Drawing for a Steel Stone when you have both your Pokemon V in hand. Sign me up. It's pretty good. And Minion V is going to open up the deck for Azul here. Be able to search for that Arvin. Such a powerful supporter, especially in this Charizard X deck. And this gets you the card you need every time, and that's Rare Candy. Yep, not, the, not the greatest, of course, as you see when... Uh, you're not going to be able to rare candy into oh. anything on this turn, but to have Battle those VIP resources, pass. it's going to be uh, nice for later on. You have that Battle VIP pass, flood the board, flood the bench, get all those Pokemon in play. You know likely, if you play Rotom, <laughs> you, uh, you draw those additional cards, there's going to be an Iono on the other side. It, it, is it worth it? Uh, potentially. It's. I mean, those cards stink. <laughs> <laughs> to have those on the bench when you're up against Screamtail, and you could run into a, a world of pain. I don't. I don't know if I even want to play the Rotom in a situation like this. It just depends on if the hand uh, is good enough. And I mean, you had to. You had to the mini on for the Arvin. Maybe. The, maybe you do need a little more help. Well, Battle VIP Pass is going to find a Charmander and a Pidgey here for Azul. Taking a look at the hand. Again, there is that Forest Seal Stone. You got energy. That Vitality Band searched out with Arvin. There's Ultra Ball for next turn, so maybe they, or there are enough resources where you don't think about playing down the Rotom, drawing the additional cards, and forcing the Iono from your opponent. Or just get a bunch of Pokemon. That's fine, too. Down to eight minutes here in game three. Where did the time go? I was excited. We had 14 minutes. It went to shuffling. And they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I do like the consideration here for the Mana Fee. We've seen that so often the door was open for the Screamtail to take some additional prize cards. You avoid that. You force your opponent to attack into active. Maybe some damage is just dealt into a Charizard and not going to take a knockout. Not playing down the Forest Seal Stone okay. to end the turn here. I guess you can always search it out with another Arvin. And looking at the list, there is a Lost Vacuum for Caden. Yeah, it's a fine consideration. The worst case scenario is your opponent Iono's you, which means that you're likely going to run into some pretty solid cards. Maybe find any of those supporters that you were looking for on the opening turn previous to the Luminion. And Kaden with the MVP there, that Ultra Ball. Oh, it has been putting in so much work for him this match. Now finds the first Curlia. Does have... 
not much else in hand. I know there's that Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Still has access to Mysterious Tail from the Mew in the active spot, but this is a turn where, unfortunately, you're going to have to kind of hold the brakes a little bit. Yep, you're waiting for your opponent to start taking prize cards, and you've unfortunately accomplished most of what you can do already this game, which with only the two Ralts to work with, you're not left with much. Level Ball will be able to find another Curlia, though, for Caden. Just some more draw power here. That's the commitment. And not going to wait for Mirage Step. Try to open up for that one extra bench space with the Curlia, but I, I understand that as well. But imagine the danger that you walk into if we see on the other side that Rare Candy Charizard bosses orders from Azul. Well, we see Rare Candy yeah. Charizard. Yeah, if you're playing with just one Curlia <laughs> for this game, you lose. <laughs> Mysterious Tail is going to go ahead and look at the top six here. Finds potentially another level ball, counter catcher maybe. Level ball. Goes off for level ball just to thin out a little bit more. But again, I, I feel like I know where the turn, the time has gone, and it's been Caden's turns. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot happening, but it's not turning into a relevant board state. And sure, Caden's doing everything that he needs to. You're, you're drawing cards, you're getting those psychic energies into the discard pile, and this leads to. Uh, a big turn for Deoxys V-Star eventually, and that's that's really all that you can ask for, is just to have that answer to the Charizard and hopefully not see a second Charizard uh, waiting on the bench for you. Taking a look through the discard now, there's five Psychic Energies. Not too bad to start things off here. It's more than we've had <laughs> for <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> it always, more always, curly as that always takes that Ultra Bowl <laughs> to, to get to that spot, and that's I do like... Turn. The attachment here on the, Deo the Deoxys may be preserving some of those hit points, give you an opportunity to stick around a little longer. All right, well, uh, Azul just drew into a, another Ultra Ball. Calm down. And this hand is very much going to be Ultra Ball for that Pidgeot EX, Rare Candy Pidgeot, Quick Search for another Rare Candy, Rare Candy Charizard EX. Ooh, could be pretty good. Boss's orders? No. I think there's an Iono. Ooh. I mean, you can always search for the <laughs> boss's orders, but then you're not there's you're not getting Charizard out in play. There's counter catcher. Can you <laughs> <laughs> steal a prize card real quick? I don't think you're allowed to complain at this point. This is the first pitch out that we've seen. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, it is definitely going to be welcomed with open arms. Another rare candy to follow along. Open wings? Sure, you can have your open wings, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, you, you can you can put a lot of pressure on, but taking a knockout against this Mew, just, it's yeah. it's not the Pokemon you'd love to knock out. You know that there's potentially a Deoxys Beastar waiting to take a knockout on you immediately afterwards. Yep, and this is what Azul is debating here. This is tough. Do you, hmm. It's also taking a lot of time. Yeah, Rick Candy, the bench here. Yeah, this was, I mean, this is ultimately a consideration to that. Just You don't want to walk into giving up those easy prize cards and taking a knockout that isn't going to matter. Sure, taking prize cards is helpful, but y you walk into a dangerous situation. <laughs> oh, no. We're just going to have 30 damage from Charmander here. <laughs> or maybe there's a Charmillion. In the hand? I think there's, there's an Iono in the hand. Maybe right, well, maybe you draw into it. Maybe. I would be able to take a knockout on something like the Mew, just deal 70 damage. Six cards for both players in this game three. No knockouts just yet. And Ooh. there is an Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball found. Playing to the outs. With this Ultra Ball, Azul can find that Charmeleon, take the knockout with just a one prize Pokemon in the active spot. I've never attacked with this Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so you've never played against, like, Mimikyu? I mean, sure, I have, but anytime I see it online, I just run away. <laughs> I'm not wasting my time. Well, there is that Heat Tackle, 70 damage, 20 to yourself. It's going to force Caden to just take a single prize off an attack if he doesn't have something like a boss's orders or counter catcher. Yep. 
asking a lot. I think we have five psychic energy in the discard pile. Two additional in hand, though. Countercatcher in hand as well. Three energies right. could go to the discard pile this turn with concealed double refinement. Plenty of energies to work with. And right now it doesn't have the Deoxys Vsart just yet. <laughs> Azul uh, remembering to take a prize card after a little bit. Another level ball to thin out, but all this, all these actions that Caden has been doing, thinning out, shuffling the deck in between each one, uh, it takes up a lot of time, just over a minute left to go, and it's going to be, I guess, possible if Caden is able to take a two prize knockout on this turn before time, it's called. Right, and that's for Caden, and on the other side for Azul. I Kaden, don't think it's Caden would be able to play around it by just not playing down those multiple yeah. of them, but yeah, it's, it gets tricky for sure. You, you need your opponent to play the game in order for Charizard to be effective. Well, here is the first refinement. Time is running down. Shining Arcana in the active spot. We do see a reversal energy. With a counter catcher, if you have access to that Gardevoir EX, you can bring up that Charizard EX, take a knockout. But then you also just leave the Charmeleon with two energy in play. I mean, this is getting close. Yeah, you, you have to. 12 <laughs> seconds. The, the timing of this is not going to work out. It is. Kaden, it's oh, not good. No. Is there the cape in hand as well? No. Just benches yeah, that mana too. too. It's, it's not. It's not yeah. great. <laughs> Countercatcher counter on that Charizard EX, and here we see the Iono. But yeah. looks like time has run out, so we'll get word if our uh, timer was actually on point or not. Usually is. Way to go, guys! <laughs> Still looking for the Gardevoir EX to accelerate these. Yeah. There's Ultra an Ultra Ball. ball. <laughs> You knew it was going to be Ultra Bowl, right? Yeah. <laughs> Still has access to Shining Arcana and another refinement as well. Oh, so there it is. Right off the top, finds another Reversal Energy for the future turn that Caden's going to have. <laughs> the, yeah, the <laughs> one final turn left. Refinement. refinement finds the Luxurious Cape. Oh. And what's looking like a pretty good setup now for how awkward it has been. Caden has just run out of time here to try to close this thing out the normal way. You cursed us. You no. said it. No, I didn't. Well, I mean, you just brought up a great point yeah. that th <laughs> 13 minutes wasn't going to be enough time for us. Especially for a Gardevoir deck. <laughs> but, but it's your fault. Okay. <laughs> it has to be. Ultra yeah, Ball's I mean, going to thin out a little bit more. Look how many actions. Caden still had to play out. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but certainly at this point, why not? Everything ready to go here. And I mean, if you look at this board, you can tell that Caden definitely prized some rolls. <laughs> this is this is this isn't the greatest, but this is uh, this is what you got here. I mean, it's still a pretty great board in this situation. You have. Your knockouts lined up with cards like this Gardevoir, the Deoxys, and then that Screamtail. I'm, yeah, exactly. You can't ask for much more, but it's a, it's it's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> well, with the knockout, Caden goes down to four prize cards. Azul is turn one. Yeah, it's very important that you remember this as we move forward. Azul is going to be looking to find those last prizes on turn three. Means Charmander is going to be a very important bench in this situation. As likely you're taking a knockout with the Charmeleon or Charizard. And you're, uh, you're going to need that additional resource to rare candy into Charizard and take another knockout later on. I mean, even if you can take a knockout with Charmander here, you're in an okay spot. But maybe, maybe you could target down Pokemon like that Gardevoir EX or something. Listen, there's a route where... Uh Something like the Luxurious Cape adds an extra prize card? No? No. That's not really going to do it. <laughs> not seeing <laughs> it. Like, does it still add the extra prize card if it's attached to a rule box Pokemon? 
I, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Quick search here from Azul is going to find a Charizard EX. Most likely, that's what he's eyeing down. Has a couple of Arvin and a boss's orders in hand. But again, a few bosses orders around this Gardevoir. It still has all the energy to take a knockout on a radiant or on that Charizard X. And with both players playing it out, it does look like they have some sort of agreement going on here. You would certainly hope so. It's looks really tricky for Azul. To find a way, not not. To, I mean, he obviously can stay in the game, but he's definitely going to be down in prizes. Yeah, and Caden, if he's able to work in the Deoxys, take a knockout on a Pokemon like that Charizard, which seems likely if the Gardevoir EX sticks around, he's going to be able to go down to two prize cards remaining. Sure, Azul would be able to follow that up with the additional Charizard, take a knockout, and tie up the game. But then the gentleman's agreement gets really weird, where yeah. you have to just assume what was going to happen later on. Looks like Arvin finds four seal stone. Not going back in, right? I don't think so. Are you quick search ready? Yep. Uh, Azul's talking through his plays, trying to figure out what's the best okay. route. Yep, there's counter catcher. So I think the route is gonna be you counter catcher the Gardevoir, you take the you have the knockout lined up on this Pokemon. You accept the fact that the Gardevoir is going to one shot the Charizard, and then you're you're trying to find rare candy, Charizard, boss sorters to win the game against the Deoxys. Because that's the way that you'll take five, four prize cards, go down to one, Caden only has two remaining. So Countercatcher really was pretty clutch there in that situation. And it still leads plenty of opportunities for Azul to find one of those three bosses orders remaining. You are asking a lot, maybe into potential Iono situations. Well, I think that's why he found the four seal stone. Go ahead and put that on, something like that, Rotom, that way, if Iono comes down and there's no lost vacuum, you have access to that boss's orders right away. Yeah, the hand right now does not have the resources. Maybe the prize cards can help. Adds fire energy. fire energy. But it's not there yet. Boss's orders is in hand for oh. Seal Stone. Oh, and the Pidgeot as well. That would yeah. be able to put it all together. But maybe a card lost like that vacuum. lost vacuum could be mm. pivotal. Gardevoir does need a reset. Hasn't used its ability at all. It's not paralyzed. It's so. tired. <laughs> it sleeps the other way, Kyle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you were paralyzed, would you not just go to sleep? <laughs> it's like this is boring. I can't move. I'm of, co of course, I'm going to bed. Energy attachment for the Deoxys V Star on the bench. He's looking to hide down something to remove with Lost Vacuum. This is the best turn that Caden has. You have the yep. Lost Vacuum, you remove the Forest Seal Stone, you have the Iono, you drop Azul down to three cards, and hopefully is not fi doesn't find any of the resources to find Rare Candy, Charizard, and the boss's orders. You know that he'll have one with the Pidgeot, but you're asking for a lot from those top four cards that Azul would see with the top deck. Really debating about this Lost Vacuum, but it, it's obviously the Curlia. I don't care about any of these cards, <laughs> as long as you don't throw away the Iona or the boss. Or the cape. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's how you need to close things out. We'll just win with Deoxys. Who cares? <laughs> Do something. Again, this is turn two of time now. Caden's last turn. Uh, Shining Arcana. I haven't used it yet. And Shining Arcana here finds another Psychic Energy. Ooh. That's, that, uh, that's helpful. That is helpful. I mean, you just, you just want an additional Pokemon to attack with. If things go awry, you could say, this Pokemon could have got the job done, maybe knocked out one of those remaining two prize Pokemon that will be on the bench. You just need one more energy to threaten. I mean, you already have knockout, I suppose, on Pokemon like that yeah, Luminion yeah, now. So, yeah, But all your energy is gone. Um, you just have to flash you got rid of You got rid of the Super Rod. Jeremy, we don't need anything. I know. Okay. <laughs> we, <laughs> the the awkward part of this We need is a turn. If, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you need a turn. You want to play Iono to mess with Azul's hand, but then you put boss's orders on the bottom of your deck, yep. which would be the way that you show your opponent that you would have won the game next turn. And honestly, depending on 
their agreement, I, I feel like just holding it is fine, like not playing the Iona. Luxurious Cape here can stop that Charmander from just taking a knockout. Forces Zul to have a lot. We do see the Iono here. But at this point now, Azul taking the knockout on the Gardevoir. That's just going to put him ahead in the prize exchange now? Yeah. That's, that's I, don't, that's I don't like that at all. <laughs> I mean, you're playing around the fact that Charmander would take a prize and tie things up, so that means maybe they weren't expecting the gentlemen's. This, this <laughs> is certainly an interesting close out here. Azul with effectively one final turn to try to take two prize cards, it looks like. What resources does he have left? Just Iona down to three. I think there was a super odd in hand. Ooh, and these are two not Iona. good. Yeah. Do you super odd first and then Iona? I think you draw a card first. Nah, maybe. Rare Ooh, candy. candy. Oh, that just... That's, that I mean... does it, right? Yeah. <laughs> You can search out the Charizard. You have the Super Rod to guarantee oh, that everything's there. So it also just depends on... The Gentleman's. The Gentleman's, yeah. If exactly. it's prizes or board state. Board state, it looks like Caden would have it with that Deoxys V-Star. If it's prizes, Azul has it. Yes. I don't want to make that decision for them. I don't get to make that decision. And thank goodness, because <laughs> it is a very awkward place to be in. But ultimately, as Azul, you I think you just... I mean, well, it really just depends now. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't have any insight to add. It's going to be up to them. And I think Azul's kind of realizing that now. Like, yeah, if I attack with this Charizard, I am going to get knocked out. Right. Well, to be fair, is he going to get knocked out? That's 182 energies on the Charizard, so 300. Needs one more psychic energy. Yeah, we'd have to show and the energy. This is why I was talking about the super rod. Okay. You can super rod the energies back in the deck. Wow, your energy point is relevant again <laughs> <laughs> for for the fringe scenario oh where the my. guys haven't extended <laughs> their <laughs> their gentleman's agreement. This is a way to close out our round nine for sure. Super Rod back, two Fire Energies and a Charizard EX. Azul's going to have that quick search, find another Charizard EX that's hiding in the deck. Does have Rare Candy, can Infernal Rain charge up. Take the knockout, take two prizes, go down to one prize card. Maybe put two Fire Energies on there. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Again, a simple boss's orders off the top would do it for Caden if there was one more turn. There's the counter, counter catcher. catchers Ooh. in hand to I, the front. Wow. So now we're back to the scenario uh, of what yep. kind of gentlemen this is. All right. Is. What have you guys decided? Whew. We won't know either. Really. Yeah, we, we have no idea. It's not like they just like raise the other guy's hand and say, <laughs> woohoo. They just shake hands and go, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we haven't seen the supporter yet. Okay. All right. Fancy. Azul gets three, Caden gets and we, two. And, and we just saw boss's orders shuffled to the bottom two with the Iono, so it's not like yeah. it's going to be drawn here. Double, Double rare candy. candy. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> what kind of gentlemen do we have? <laughs> Does he get to look at his top deck? <laughs> Make a decision, guys. <laughs> Please. I want to go home. The game is over. The game is technically over. Technically, it is over. That was turn three. The game does not get to continue from here, but Caden is going to look at a card. <laughs> he has three rare candies. <laughs> he now can say, I was unable to win this game, and likely the concession would follow. Yeah, you got it. Yep. He Kayden says you got it. Just conceded, and Azul Garcia Grego stays alive in this tournament. Moving on to day two with a 6-1-2 record. That was so sweaty. <laughs> wow. There was so much happening there. And, of course, Caden is going to show 
uh, that not only did he have the boss in the previous hand he Ionode, he had the counter catcher in the hand that Azul Ionode, and then he drew into all three <laughs> rare candies when he needed to win the game. Oh, wild, wild situation there, but I, I do appreciate the fact that they understand yeah. this is one of those situations where you do need to have that that talk before you play you go into the game and it's gonna it's gonna work out. Caden with the concession, Azul moves on and not only is he moving on with a win here, but you said six one two. Yeah. So that's a that's an additional match point. That's going to be very big in day two. Well, here's that game two. Azul able to get a turn one knockout, clear up that mirage step, just go down to four prize cards super early. Again, Kate not having much of anything else. Azul has the boss's orders on the Curlia, takes the knockout yet again, going down to three and. With that TM Devolution able to steal this game yet again. And on this game three, this is where it really, really got sweaty. Yeah. Not only are you working with the amount of time that you have, you're up against a player of a soul's caliber, but you have two Ralts in the prize cards. You finally find all the resources to take this big knockout, close out on one of those Charizards, but time runs out. And we see the counter catcher there from both players, Azul, uh, making quick work of that Gardevoir EX, really limiting the potential from Caden to find additional knockouts outside of this Gardevoir, which will take a knockout on that second Charizard. But at this point, Azul had everything he needed. He took the knockout, gets the additional prize because of the cape, and there's three rare <laughs> candies on a turn that wasn't technically allowed to happen. Yeah. But go ahead and look. <laughs> Who cares? And just like that, Azul trying to repeat regionals, uh, trying to make it to that seven mark that Michael Paramount, uh holds alone atop the top the players here. Yep, it's a, it's a pretty pretty great place to be. I'm sure that <laughs> Pram would have would have liked to add a little bit extra to there to, to have a cushion. It's uh it's getting uh it's getting close in that race. Yeah, <laughs> it is definitely close for sure, and close just in the race for championship points, these worlds invites. Azul trying to make it three worlds invites yeah, with just championship points. He doesn't have the 600 yeah, invite which is yet. Yeah, insane. Well, it's because he doesn't play his locals. Yeah. 